extremely important to read and understand the safety section of your manual and all the safety warnings on your high pressure equipment before performing any maintenance. Begin by removing the high pressure tube from either end of the intensifier. Remember to always use two wrenches while performing this procedure. After moving the tube out of the way, remove the output adapter. Using a pick or small hex wrench, reach into the hole in the high pressure seat and remove the seat from the check valve body. Next, remove the low pressure inlet connection. Loosen the nuts a quarter turn at a time using a star pattern. Remove the high pressure end cap and set aside. Next, remove the cylinder and check valve while being careful not to damage the ceramic plunger. If necessary, pry between the cylinder and end cap gently using two large flathead screwdrivers. Pull the hydraulic seal housing using the seal housing removal tool. Removing the proximity switch from the top of the end cap will make this easier by venting the back side of the housing. It is very important to have clean hands and clean work environment to avoid premature seal failures. Remove the check valve body from the high pressure cylinder by rolling and tapping with a plastic or rubber mallet. Make sure to inspect the face of the check valve body for cracks or wear from erosion. Remove the seals by placing the cylinder on the locating ring. Place the stepped end of the push tool against the seal and tap it out by using a rubber or plastic mallet. Never use a metal hammer or you will damage the seal tools. Flip the cylinder over, again placing it on the locating ring. Push the spacer tube back into the cylinder if it has slid out. To remove the second seal, place the non-stepped end of the push tool against the spacer tube inside the cylinder and tap the seal out. Clean the high pressure cylinder ends and inspect for damage paying extra attention to the edge near the bore of the cylinder. If you happen to find any chips or cracks, you will need to replace the cylinder. Marking or pitting on the flat face further away from the bore can be cleaned with an emery cloth and then a scotch pad and will not require a replacement of the cylinder. The following procedure is completed using seal kit 11451 which contains all parts necessary to replace seals in both high pressure cylinders. Pop kit 14235 contains all the parts needed to repair the check valve on all A series pumps. This animation shows the proper assembly order for all A series pumps. Poppet Kit 12024 contains all the parts needed to repair the check valve on all the AS series pumps.
Pulse animation shows the proper assembly order for all AS series pumps. Using the grease packet supplied in the kit, apply a small amount to the O-ring and place the O-ring on the plastic seal. Place a clean cylinder on the seal installation spacer tool. Slide the spacer tube into the cylinder with the basket side up. Place a clean basket in the end of the spacer tube, making sure not to get any grease on the basket. Put the poppet in the basket so the small diameter on the poppet is down, making sure not to get any grease on the poppet. Place the locating ring on the cylinder, then put the seal insertion sleeve inside the ring with a thicker side down. Place the seal in the sleeve with the O-ring towards the cylinder. Using the non-stepped end of the push tool and holding the insertion sleeve down against the cylinder, press the seal into the bore of the cylinder. Next, place the hoop in the insertion sleeve with the sharp side towards the cylinder. Use the non-stepped end of the push tool and plastic or rubber mallet to pound the hoop into the cylinder. Remove the seal insertion tool and make sure that the seal is seated flush in the end of the cylinder. Push the check valve body into the cylinder and tap it with a rubber mallet to seat it fully against the cylinder. Next, flip the cylinder over and stand it on the check valve. Place the locating ring in the pilot on the cylinder. Put the cylinder insertion sleeve in the locating ring, thick side down. Put the o-ring in the insertion sleeve with the o-ring towards the cylinder. Use the non-stepped end of the push tool to push the seal into the cylinder. Put the hoop into the insertion sleeve sharp side down. Then tap into place using the non-stepped end of the push tool and a rubber mallet. Then make sure the seal is seated flush to the end of the cylinder. Apply blue goop to the contact face opposite the check valve. Clean and inspect the face of the check valve body and the low pressure poppet. Look for any wear, cracks, or erosion marks on the face. Surface wear on the check valve body is normal, and this part can be refurbished using a granite surface block and 1500 grit wet dry abrasive paper. The following is a lapping procedure. Place the abrasive paper on a granite surface block and tape the sides to hold it smooth and flat. Place the check valve with poppet face down and slide it forward and back on the abrasive paper. After each stroke, rotate the check valve body slightly and repeat the motion and rotation until the face is smooth and flat with no wear. Only gentle pressure is necessary to refurbish the face. Excessive pressure or rocking may damage the check valve body beyond repair. Deeper wear marks may require use of 600 grit abrasive paper to start, then finish with a 1500 grit abrasive paper. Clean and inspect the high pressure seat. Look for cracks, erosion marks, or deep indents from the high pressure poppet. Remove the high pressure poppet and spring and inspect these parts as well. If any parts are showing damage, all three should be replaced and are available as a kit. This animation shows the proper assembly order for the poppet, spring, and seat. Thank you.
Clean and inspect the high pressure cylinder. Look closely at the ends of the bore for any cracks or pitting. After use, cylinders can develop a sharp edge which can be removed by lapping film and scotch pads. To remove any burrs from the end of the cylinder, place on a clean table and hold a piece of lapping film with each thumb and roll the cylinder forward and back while applying pressure. Clean the cylinder thoroughly after this procedure. Any debris remaining in the cylinder could cause permanent seal or poppet failure. Clean and inspect the seal housing. Remove the bronze seal backup. The seal backup can be flipped over one time to extend its useful life before being replaced. Rod seal is on the back side of the housing and should be replaced when oil leaks are present or every 2000 hours of operation. Place the rod seal on the plunger with the thicker side towards the hydraulic end cap. Slide the seal housing onto the plunger and over the oil seal and push it until it is seated against the end cap. Put the cylinder back onto the plunger carefully to avoid dislodging the seal. Always push the check valve to put this together. Put the end cap onto the check valve body and studs. Apply o-ring grease to the o-rings prior to this step if the o-rings feel dry. Hand thread the nuts onto the end of the studs. Then tighten them using a star pattern to ensure equal loading. Torque the nuts to 275 foot-pounds in small increments of 50 foot-pounds continuing with the star pattern. Apply blue goop to the back of the high pressure seat and place it in the check valve body using a small pin or hex wrench and use a finger to seat it in its pilot. Make sure the high pressure poppet and spring are inserted in the output adapter properly, then thread the output adapter into the check valve body. Use an open ended wrench to make sure that it is tight. Reconnect the inlet water hose, threading until finger tight. Then tighten an eighth turn further with an open-ended wrench. Over-tightening this fitting will make it break. Position the high pressure line in place, making sure that the collar is threaded on the tube so a few threads are still showing. Then using two wrenches, make sure the connection is tight. Following the proper machine startup procedure after maintenance will ensure that you maximize your uptime between maintenance. Start by setting your pump pressure to minimum by backing down the control knobs. For the A and AS series pumps, set the pump to low pressure by turning the control knobs counterclockwise. For proportional control pumps, set the pressure setting to 10,000 PSI. Next, turn on the cutting head and pump and allow it to stroke until water comes out of the head. This clears the air out of the system prior to increasing pressure. It is normal for the intensifier to stroke very quickly while it is working out the air. Finally, turn off the cutting head and ramp the pressure back slowly to the desired cutting pressure. 
For the A and AS series pumps, you can do this by slowly turning the control knob clockwise. For the proportional control pumps, you can use the touch screen to ramp up the pressure a little bit at a time. The slow ramp up ensures that the seals are seated properly in the cylinders while minimizing the stroking of the pump.